Hello guys, Friday means another video from my office on this channel, not that much about Laravel from technical point of view, but more about dev career. And today I want to address junior developers. So if you are junior, recent graduate, yet to find your first job or still at university or considering the career of developer, I think as AI usage grows stronger, you will have even more problems to find your first job, unfortunately. But I think I know what you should do and I will give you three tips on how to improve your chances for employment. So first, the problem, why specifically juniors are in danger in the world of AI? So recently I've been playing with various AI tools and assistants and digging deeper, reading about them a lot, comparing various models in practice. And I noticed a pattern of how senior developers look at AI assistants. Many of them consider AI assistants like ChatGPT, Claude, or Cursor IDE as junior developers, junior interns, which they can offload some tasks to and then review their code. So developers don't trust AI assistants enough, so they're not good enough to perform the tasks on their own without supervision, but smart enough to start with a task or perform simple tasks. Guess what? This sounds very similar to a definition of a human junior developer or intern. So I don't have any numbers to prove it on the market, but I have a very strong feeling that in many companies for less significant projects or more simple tasks, they would reconsider whether they need to hire a junior developer. Because think about what tasks juniors get as they hired. I will give a few examples of my own. For example, here's a project, get familiar with it and write automated tests for it. Here's a project, we need a filament admin panel for it, something like that. Or here's a project idea, we need this simple project with just cruds with a few things on top. Guess what? All of that can be done by AI these days in bigger or smaller capacity. And looking from business point of view, from hiring point of view, hiring a person is more complicated. From legal point of view, social guarantees, contracts, and usually hiring a person is more expensive, not only salary, but then taxes on top, versus AI models are either free or quite cheap with the most expensive one I know, O1 Pro at the moment is $200 per month, which is still much cheaper than a full-time developer, even junior. And this problem is on top of job shortage problem, which already existed in 2023 to 2024, especially for junior positions, which are actually squeezed from two sides. They are squeezed by former senior developers who were fired, unfortunately, and they couldn't find jobs elsewhere. So they agree to lower salary and junior positions if they cannot find any alternatives. On the other hand, they are squeezed by things that I told you just now, AI. So it seems like the only type of companies who would hire junior developers at the moment are those who have strategy for getting people in, train them to then raise them to senior developer positions. But for that, you need to have strategy, long-term strategy and budget for that. Too many companies try to survive year by year or month by month basis without such long-term strategy. So it seems like a pretty dark, sad reality, right? But of course, you can do something about it. And now I'm getting to my three tips, three pieces of advice. Tip number one, learn faster. So to keep up with all the technology and AI advancements, you need to learn faster, adopt more technologies faster, and you can do that with the help of AI as well. So it's kind of double-edged sword. AI is against you, but also it can help you a lot the learning process can be much more effective with AI. Because in earlier days, juniors are learning to code, trying to code something, and then they're usually stuck when something doesn't work. And then they do what? They Google, they go on forums, they ask someone, and then they wait for someone to basically unstuck them, help them. Guess what? In many cases, now you can use ChatGPT or other alternatives, just providing your error. And in many cases, it would help you get unstuck quicker. Also, it can help you to improve your code. So for example, you can write something and then ask AI assistant to review it and provide suggestions to improve. Of course, AI can even write the code for you, but be really careful with that if you're a junior developer. You still need to understand every piece of it. And then with that in mind, practice, practice, practice. Release more projects on GitHub, private or public experiment with variety of frameworks and languages, and in that way get experience for the actual job position. In a way, this situation didn't change from that classical thing that 
Every job requires at least two years of experience for any developer, so you still need to get that experience. But with the help of AI, you can get the equivalent of two years experience faster now. Which leads me to advice point number two, become a power user of AI tools. There's a famous saying, I think it's by Sam Altman, that AI will not take our jobs, but people who use AI will take the jobs from people who don't use it. So from that point of view, companies do not need developers that much, but they need AI operators developers. So I don't think there will be like AI operator as separate profession or something like that, but I think AI operator will become a part of almost everyone's job, including developers. So if you gain experience with using those tools and come with fresh ideas to some company, you can actually have an advantage over the senior developers at the company who would often refuse to trust AI just because they believe in their own skills more and wouldn't even try to adopt them. So if you show AI advantages to company owners or someone at the company, you may have advantage to get in and get a job. And then advice number three, learn to do something that AI assistants will not do. So if we think of AI assistants or AI tools as tools to get prompted, so you prompt the AI and get the result, the code or code review, there are things happening before and after that prompting. So before the prompt, what is important? Project management, communication, client management, understanding of business requirements and business context in general, planning skills, skills of writing the prompt in the first place or writing the task description. And that also requires soft skills in general, like communication with other people. So even by being a better communicator, you can again have advantages over developers who just write code. And then what happens after writing the code or after result of that AI prompt are things like deployment, working with GitHub, working with tools for DevOps, scalability, putting the project on various servers, CI CD process, bash scripts and stuff like that. Those can be also partially automated, but still it needs a lot of human supervision, at least in the very beginning and someone on the team who know those things inside out and would be able to debug if something goes wrong, if some server goes down, if you have a spike of visitors during Black Friday or something. In those cases, AI assistance will not help. So yeah, these are my three pieces of advice. Learn faster, become a power user of AI tools, and think about tasks that AI assistance will not perform well. All in all, as usual, the problem exists and then it's your choice whether to complain about it or do something about it. What do you think? What other pieces of advice would you give to juniors with the modern AI reality? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.